Hi, my name's Tim and I'm a photographer from Perth in Australia. Now, I shoot the majority of my work on colour negative film and a part of that is scanning it myself at home on an Epson V550 flatbed scanner. Now this is a super affordable scanner but it's not easy to scan colour negative film on it um, and it certainly takes a lot of practice um, to get your technique right. Now in this video I'm going to show you my technique which I've been developing for the last year or so and I'm quite happy with the results I'm getting now. One of the biggest parts of scanning film is knowing what a good scan consists of. If you don't know what you're looking for, you'll never get a good scan. So for me, the most important part of scanning is making sure that your final file has a full range of tones, meaning there is no dark tones which have been cut completely to black and none of your light tones have been blown out completely to white. So the full range of tones is there and that means, that means that you're retaining the full detail of the negative. You also need to make sure you remove any colour cast from your image, which means that you, the whole scan doesn't have a slightly blue tint or a slightly red tint, but all the colours are completely natural, um, which means that you'll also have the widest, the widest range of colours possible. So without further ado, I'm going to head over to the scanner and show you my technique for scanning colour negative film. Okay, so this is the V550 that I used to scan. Um, and this is the film holder, so I'm going to be scanning some 120 films. It's shot on a 6x7 medium format camera today. Um, so this film will go in this holder. Now I'm just going to show you scanning medium format film today because it's a hell of a lot easier to scan due to the larger negative, so the grain's not as much of an issue. Um, scanning 35mm film on this scanner though can be quite problematic in that it's not the sharpest uh, scanner and it's not the best at resolving smaller eggs. So I'm going to be careful. I don't use gloves when handling my eggs, um, although you probably should. But I don't really care too much, to be honest. Now, when I put the neg in, I want you want to put it in so that the text is the wrong way around. Okay. So you, on here it says Kodak Portrait, but it says it backwards. So that means that you're going to get the correctly flipped scan. And then I just carefully slide it in the holder and pop the door down. And then next I'll just take my rocket blower and blow it. Make sure that you're blowing from the bottom up, which means that all the dust falls down. I'm going to close the scanner and head over to the computer. Okay, so when you get into Epson scan for the first time, this is what you'll see. Now, the key here is that we're in full auto mode, which we do not want to be. So we click that and we'll go to professional mode. This gives us the biggest control over everything that we do. Now, a few settings firstly. So I'm scanning color negative films. I'm going to change it, this setting here to color negative film. If you're shooting black, if you're scanning black and white, sorry, just obviously have it on black and white. You have the choice here between a number of settings. So for color, I usually scan it in 48 bit. Now the difference between 48 and 24 bit is that you do get a slightly wider uh, range of colors, but you're gonna drastically increase your file size. So I'll generally scan in the 48 bit as opposed to 24, and then down, uh, and then go down to 24 in Photoshop to reduce my file size once I'm happy with the colors. Now it's the same applies for the grayscale if you're scanning in black and white. Uh, for resolution, 24 D, 2400 DPI is generally as large as you may as well go on the V550 because increasing that is not going to actually increase the res resolving power of the scanner um, it's just going to stretch the image outward so keep that on 2400 I always make sure all of these settings are off never found any of them to be particularly useful or good except occasionally backlight correction does help um, but very rarely for me now what I'm going to do is do a preview scan okay so we have our preview here and you can see it's done sort of an automated job of correcting the color for these so it's automatically selected all the frames and it's approximated the colors for them but I'm not happy with these so as you can see it's very muddy here in the shadows um, and our highlights, a lot of our highlights have been clipped to white, um, which just doesn't look great. So what I'm going to do is go over here to normal instead of thumbnail, which gives you the full view of the negative. 
and then we can see the whole strip. Now I'm going to rotate it. Now I'm just going to select within the frame and that's done an automatic exposure for it. Now firstly make sure Unsharp Mask is checked off as well. So the problem here is that our highlights are way too bright so they're all a lot of them are clipped completely to white. We can fix that by going to levels and we view our histogram here. So this is a graph of all of the, the range of, of tone in our image. And these arrows represent the, um, the amount of tone that is being displayed in the image. So everything to the right of this white point here is gonna be clipped to white. And everything to the left of this black point is gonna be clipped to black. So if we wanna increase the tonal range, we just bring these arrows out to meet our data. And you can see automatically the detail in our sky is vastly improved. So that was before. And then as we scan, as we bring it out, we get so much more detail. And the same goes for our shadows down here. So bring those out as well. Now, obviously, it doesn't look good because it's way too dark and it's way too flat. So these two arrows down here are our output levels. And we want them to be right on the left and the right, which means that our darkest tone is going to be black and our lightest tone is going to be white. Now that makes it look a hell of a lot better, but we still are looking a little bit dull for me. So we take the middle middle slider here, which is called the gamma, and as we slide it to the left, we're just going to increase the overall brightness of the image. That looks good to me. Now, the problem with Epson Scan is that as a default, whenever you move this selection here, it automatically re-exposes. So it recalculates the exposure. So as I bring it out to try and get the whole frame in, it undoes any of that good work we've done. So it considers part of the black frame to be part of the image. And as you can see on the histogram, yeah, it's all ruined. Okay. Now, the way we fix that is in a setting under configuration, we click here. And then under color, we want to turn off the setting continuous auto exposure which means that as we slide this around the marquee it's not going to re-expose for us so I'm going to go and I'm going to do what we did initially and then I can resize the marquee to include all of the borders and I'm going to hit scan okay so I've gone ahead and I've loaded the scan into Photoshop and I also did a second scan with all the settings on auto. So it was um, it was auto exposed by Epson scan. And what we can see is the issue here is that this region here, we have a bunch of just black. So it's just blown straight, uh, straight into black and in the sky as well is very white. So in general, it's just too contrasty. The colors are a bit too saturated um, and there's, it just doesn't look like there's a whole lot of detail. So when you compare it to our scan and see how much flatter the scan is. Now flatness is everything in scan. Even if you don't like the look, having a flat scan means that you can control the contrast as much as you want in Photoshop without uh, without losing any detail. Okay, so you see if we compare these two regions here, see how much more detail is in this area compared to here. And then from here, what I'll generally do is either control the contrast in curves if I want to add a tiny bit. I I, I do like quite a light, quite a flat scan. Just a bit of a contrast bump. And then I'm really happy with the colors that Epson Scan has automatically come up with here. Um, but at this point is where I would adjust the color cast. So I'm gonna scan another neg which has a cast and show you how I'd create that. So the neg I'm interested in scanning is this middle one here. So what I'm gonna do is create a rough selection, turn off Unsharp Mask, and then hit the auto exposure button. So we're going to go ahead and do what we did with the levels and bring out those arrows to make sure we retain all of the data. So what I can see here is that the data in a jacket is coming back and then bring out the shadows to get more shadows and then change the output slide. Now I think the colors are okay but I think there's a bit of a, a bit of a warm or a purpley cast to the image. So I'm going to go into curves. And by adding green, I'll remove a bit of magenta, very slightly. And I'm going to come to red and remove some red, which will add some cyan back into the image. Very slight adjustment. 
and I'm much happier with that. So I'm going to create a bigger selection now, scan that and go ahead and finish it off in Photoshop. First thing I'm going to do is to resize the crop so that we don't have any of that border. Perfect. Now I'm just going to make sure that our levels are where they need to be. So I'm going to bring the black point across until I can see there's a little bit of black in the image. Now to check that, hold option. And as you scan it up, any points that are black will appear. So about there is good. Just adding a bit more of the black tones. But I think it's gone a bit dark for now, so just keeping the gamma. Much nicer. So it brings out the shadows in her hair. And I'm happy with that. And then one of my little tricks I like to use is a plugin from the Nick collection by Google, and it's free, um, called Color Effects. Okay, now Color Effects um, has a plugin within it called Pro Contrast, which is just up here, which I've loaded, um, which has three sliders. The first two are very helpful. I'll often use it to just take the edge off any color cast, which might still exist after I've adjusted the curve. So it's still slightly warm, so as I bring it up, it just cools the image down slightly, makes the skin tones quite a bit more realistic. And also has this correct contrast slider, which I like to use to bring contrast back into my image. And then has these two sliders, shadows and highlights, which just sort of preserve some of the details. So. Okay, so there are the two final images. I hope you've learned something from this tutorial. Um, it's only a very basic rundown of my technique. If you want to go in, if you want, if you want me to go in depth with any other part of my technique, um, let me know. I will do a black and white video soon, um, and I will do a video specifically focusing on 35 mil and sort of getting the most out of a 35 mil negative. Um, but in the meantime, thanks for watching. Feel free to get in touch with me in the comments below or in any of my other social media channels. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.